Hey guys, it's Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today's video is to help you guys understand melasma, but importantly, how to choose between chemical peels and lasers for melasma. So first of all, melasma, the most important thing is the diagnosis. There are many causes of pigmentation, but melasma, generally speaking, affects females, and it usually occurs in exposed areas, for example, the forehead, the cheeks, upper lip, and sometimes the neck and jawline areas. So once you get the diagnosis, where do you go from there? So before you go for peels or before you go for lasers, you've got to understand that melasma is a medical condition, so it should be treated appropriately. Generally speaking, we start patients on what's known as a pigment inhibitor. So these are called tyrosinase inhibitors. And what these chemicals do is to prevent or reduce pigment production from the cell called the melanocyte. There are various types of pigment inhibitors. The most famous, the most powerful, and the most easily obtainable through a prescription is that called hydroquinone. So hydroquinone, there are safety issues, but if you limit the exposure to three to four months, it is considered safe, and it's probably the gold standard for melasma management. In the US and other countries, you may have access to something called Triluma, which is basically a mixture of hydroquinone, a retinoid like tretinoin, as well as a anti-inflammatory or steroid. Generally speaking, it has less irritation compared to standalone treatments, for example, a high concentration of hydroquinone or strong retinoid preparation. Other pigment inhibitors include ascorbic acid. So if you're looking at vitamin C, you can buy that over the counter, anywhere between 10 to 20% L ascorbic acid. From there, you can add arbutin. For example, alpha arbutin, which is artificially made, or a naturally found compound called beta arbutin. Botanicals can certainly help, and they include bearberry as well as licorice extracts. From there, you've got other compounds, including kojic acid, but you also have vitamin A, including retinol. Niacinamide can be used, but it's pretty weak as its main action is an anti-inflammatory. So from there, your dermatologist may add something called transamic acid. And T-acid is a, considered the gold standard for oral treatment of melasma. Generally speaking, it's 500 milligrams once a day. Certainly topical formulations can be used. However, as a topical, whether it be a lotion, cream, or serum, T-acid does not work that well. And it needs to actually be delivered either through a laser or less predictably and more unsafe through microneedling. So now that we've got that underway, now that you have your diagnosis and you have your medical management for melasma, you can either choose between peels or lasers. So how do we actually choose between peels and lasers? First of all, part of the clinical scenario is that we need to find the depth of the pigment. So melasma can be classified as primarily epidermal, which is a top part of your skin, primarily dermal, the bottom part of your skin, or if you're fence sitting, epidermal and or uh, dermal. In other words, mixed melasma. Most cases of melasma will fall under the epidermal greater than dermal or epidermal equals dermal. Very rarely you get dermal melasma. It is kind of hard to ascertain the features unless you are a clinical expert and we often use something called dermatoscope to look carefully for graying to suggest that the pigment is deep. So once that's established, if you have epidermal melasma or mixed melasma, certainly you have the option of either peels or lasers. The upside of chemical peels is that generally speaking for stronger peels, something like your Cosmolan, your Dermomolan peels, you only need one treatment. The downside of that is that you will have a downtime with skin recovery of any, anywhere between five days all the way up to 10 days. Remembering that with peels, you can only improve primarily epidermal melasma or the epidermal component of epidermal slash dermal melasma, in other words, mix. So in summary, peels are really good for superficial pigment. They work very, very well and very fast. In other words, you get an improvement, generally speaking, within seven to 14 days. They all need to be maintained. Generally speaking, it's a home preparation of certain topicals and anti-pigment formulations that you carry through for a period of between three to six months. So other chemical peels that can help include things like glycolic peels, lactic acid peels, less so salicylic acid peels, but certainly retinoic acid peels can help as well. Those peels have an advantage that they don't have much in the way of downtime. So we're looking at maybe a couple of hours redness, 
The downside about these superficial peels, unlike the novel Dermamalan slash Cosmolan peels, is that you will have to have a series of peels over a period of between six to eight weeks. So in summary, peels are great. Expensive peels can certainly help. Those are the Dermamalan Cosmolan peels, but you gotta make sure that the pigment is either superficial or mixed. The downtime can be regulated from no downtime to a downtime of between one to two weeks. So what can lasers do and what type of lasers do we use to treat melasma? So lasers, we can classify that as pigment lasers or pigment specific lasers. For example, your Q-switch lasers, your Pico lasers, and then you can use other lasers called non-ablative lasers. And last of all, you can use things called vascular lasers. So in my opinion, and probably reflected upon the literature, the two standout lasers include your Q-switch lasers and also your Pico lasers. I tend to use the Q-switch lasers in most cases. So the Q-switch lasers require more treatments, anywhere between five to 10 sessions. The downside about that is that it takes a while before you see improvement. So anywhere between two to eight weeks. The Pico lasers, however, you will get a good improvement in probably 80% of patients. And the upside with Pico lasers is that probably around three to four times quicker uh, to see results compared to the Q-switch lasers. The downside about the Pico laser is that it's more expensive because the laser device itself, if you buy a good unit, for example, like the Pico Shure Pro, you're looking at probably a quarter of a million US dollars compared to something like a Q-switch laser, which may cost a clinic in the order of between 30 to $60,000. Q-switch lasers, relatively cost-effective, slower to work, uh, zero downtime. Pico lasers, more expensive to use, more expensive to implement faster action, side effect rate, probably about three to four times higher than the Q-switch lasers, but still very low if you know what you're doing. So in my practice, I do prefer the Q-switch lasers. In about 40% of patients, I use the Pico lasers because they offer a much faster response. Additionally, Pico lasers can help with your skin toning. In other words, it can improve skin quality, make your skin brighter, reduce pore sizing, uh, superficial scars, pigmentation, for example, post-inflammatory pigment and mixed dermal pigment together with things like lentigos or sunspots. So that's the beauty about Q-switch lasers and Pico lasers. The other group that we talk about include your non-ablative fractional laser and they include things like the clear and brilliant and the 1927 thulium lasers which include things like Fraxel, LaserMD and Moxie. These lasers can in the literature show to improve melasma, but in clinical practice, they're pretty much ordinary. You need multiple treatments. The results are like meh. And then the downtime is probably in between two to four days. So certainly they are out there. Out of a hundred patients with melasma, I may treat one, possibly two with these kinds of lasers. And for those who have really deep pigment, for example, uh, dermal pigment, I may use something called a non-ablative 1550 or 1570 laser because what it does is that it shuffles the melanin, in other words, the pigment from deep all the way up to the epidermis, in other words, a superficial laser skin to be extruded. So just in summary, fractional lasers, they do have a role. They're probably best used for deep dermal melasma. Settings matter. And in most situations, you will require several treatments. The efficacy rate, despite what the literature shows, generally speaking is in the order of, of between 10 to 30 percent after three to four sessions lastly vascular lasers because there is a blood supply that feeds melasma we can certainly use vascular lasers for example like yellow light lasers whether it be your v-beam uh, laser your 532 lasers or your diode lasers they can actually be used to treat melasma reduce the vasculature once again when i rank everything it's the q-switch lasers the pico lasers then really down the bottom is your fractional lasers and followed by your vascular lasers. Guys, so in summary, know your melasma, get the diagnosis right, start on medical therapy, consider peels if it's superficial. Peels are more expensive than lasers, but they can work faster. From there, if you want fast results, your Pico lasers. If you want slower results, but less downtime, and it's also more cost effective, consider your Q-switch lasers. If you're really desperate and nothing else works, consider your fractional lasers. I hope you liked that video. It's a quick one, but hopefully it gives you guys some kind of framework to navigate the world of melasma.